and welcome back to Interbase Labs. In this video, we're going to be looking at custom exceptions. So, what is an exception? Well, simply put, an exception is when something goes wrong. And quite often, if you have data being put in, you may want to check that the data is correct. And if not, you may want to raise an exception to prevent that data from being put into the database. So how can you add this logic into the data layer to prevent invalid data being entered? Well, the simple way to do that is to create a custom ex exception and then set some triggers against the database that contain the logic for the information checking. So we're going to do that using a combination of what we've already learned through um, UDFs and also with triggers. So first, the create exception syntax is simple. It's create exception, the exception name, and then the message. So for example, we're going to use an exception for checking a tax ID is valid. So we're going to create a new exception called tax underscore ID underscore exception. And then if this is raised, it's going to give us a message invalid tax ID. So how do we raise the exception? Well, once we've created the exception, we can then code to it. So here we're going to create two triggers that happen on the before insert and the before update events. And these triggers are going to be set onto the suppliers table here. And we're going to be checking the suppliers table, the new value for the tax underscore number. And we're going to be passing that value to a valid tax ID method that's exposed through our UDF. And that UDF method will then return back true if it's a valid ID or false if it's false. If it is false, then we know we have invalid data and then we can use the exception, tax underscore ID underscore exception to raise the exception and stop the data change. So let's have a look at that in practice. Okay, so let's start with our UDF. Now we mentioned in the introduction that we have a UDF and this one's written using Delphi. Uh, you can equally write them using C++ Builder um, to, to create your UDFs to plug in. Once we've written our function here, we can see our declaration here of valid tax ID which takes in a string value and returns back a Boolean result. And here our, our business logic for our function is checking that if we have a value passed in, so a, a null result will return back true, but if we have some value then we are going to check to make sure that every character in there conforms to the tax ID syntax. And here we've done a simple syntax where it's an alpha, new, an alpha letter to start, followed by a number or a, a list of numbers. And as long as it matches to a letter followed by numbers, then it's quite happy and returns back true. So once we've compiled this and we've got our UDF library, we have then added our UDF into our external functions. So here we can see we have our valid tax ID declared. We can see that we have one parameter which is a string passed in and returns back a Boolean. And here we can see the metadata for that if we wanted to, to use that. Now once we've created our external function, we're then able to use it. And if we go and have a look at our table suppliers, we can see here that we have our tax number field. We can see here, if we look at the metadata, that we have our triggers on here. And the triggers are, as described earlier, for the before insert and before update, and that they call our external function. And if there's any error, then they create, they raise the exception. And we can see our list of exceptions here. We only have the one exception. So let's go and use this, exception, this um, business logic now and try and update the suppliers table and update the tax number. So let's do update suppliers set tax number equals foo where id equals 10. Now I know we have a record in there with id 10. So we can prepare that statement. That's okay. We can run it. And we can see that we get an exception here that if invalid tax ID raised because foo does not pass our tax ID. If we change this to 
F00 or F123 and run that. We can see that that has executed and if we indeed do select star from suppliers now we can see that the tax number has updated. So there we are, we have our business logic into our data layer for protecting our tax number using UDFs, using exceptions and triggers.